Thanks for being a part of In the Trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And today, we talk once again with defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo. Man, how about his last three game plans? Shut down Derrick Henry. Take away the run. Have to deal with Patrick Mahomes and Kelsey. Totally different game plan. Come back to Chubb. Chubb's the straw that stirs the drink with the Cleveland Browns. You get to take that straw out of the drink make Watson have to drink it without a straw. I mean, and he does that. He is on a roll. Lou Anarumo is getting a lot of buzz. He's a candidate to be a head coach with somebody's NFL team next year. He is doing a masterful job. Players love him. They love his game plans. We're going to talk to him about all that. He's going to talk to us about his players. It's all good stuff. Can't miss this one. Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lapham brought to you by First Star Logistics as always in our outstanding First Star Logistics studios. And as always, we have an outstanding guest because it is defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo. Stop the presses. Assistant coach of the year. I don't care who's the sponsor. I don't care if there's if there's 12 assistant coach of the year awards. Coach Anarumo should sweep the table. I'm telling you, coach, you are just putting together game plan after game plan that is stymieing opponents and your players are responding and they love it. Yeah. I'm going to hire, I told you you're my new agent. So. <laughs> Seriously work. though. It's been great. I appreciate it a lot. So, I mean, do you, do you get the vibe? I mean, do you, obviously you do, but I mean, I, I even get it. I feel like they are so excited <laughs> about what you're doing and how you're doing it and how you're accentuating what they can do as football players and then going out and being able to do it. I mean, there's there's some good stuff going on for you in that locker room and on that football field, Coach. Uh, we got a great, great, you know, uh, a great group of guys, a great uh, team, great team chemistry, and uh, it continues to show up each week. So, uh, you know, we're coming down the home stretch of the season here with four left the last quarter of the season, and uh, we got to make sure we do uh, – you know, everything we can to, to win every one of these games. So the Cleveland game, let's talk about that for a second. Ten points, fewest points you've allowed all season long happened against the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland has a running back by the name of Nick Chubb. And two weeks earlier, a running back by the name of Derrick Henry. They combine 72 yards. Combined. <laughs> I mean, in the second half, the Browns rushed for six yards. Are you kidding me, Coach? These are two good football teams that can run the football. What was the key to success to shutting that down? Well, when you watch the tape, I think, you know, anytime you're talking about the run game, it, it takes all 11, as we say. And, uh, you know, it starts up front with the big guys. And, you know, DJ is just, uh, as I've said before, he got injured. He was playing as good as any interior D lineman in our league. And, uh, you know, along with BJ and, and uh, Zach Carter and, and Josh Tupo back now, uh, setting edges with Sam and Trey and uh, the linebackers, Phil and Jermaine and Logan. Uh, and then, oh, by the way, when the ball bounces on the perimeter, our safeties and our corners have tackled really well this year. So that's a big part of it. Uh, anytime you don't have a bunch of missed tackles, you, you're going to play pretty good. Yeah, I'll tell you. What was it, two missed tackles in this game, Coach? Knock on wood, yes. Two missed tackles. Are you, that's, you guys are a bunch of tackling machines out there. You know, I've heard the old axiom, and I do kind of – a. a subscribe to it uh to a point a defense is only as good as up the middle like in baseball catcher sh shortstop second base center field you know if you're real good defensively up the gut you have a chance to be a good defense with with dj with logan pratt and then your two safeties the killer bees bell and bates i mean you are very good up the middle defensively it, does that hold true do you think to an extent uh, yeah no i i definitely think that and you know, it, take, it goes to every level of the defense where you got guys that are veteran players that trust in their abilities, trust in what we're doing, and can communicate to uh, each part of the defense. And um, you know, it it you know, there's always fires you got to put out on Sundays and 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 be problem solvers. And our guys do a great job of that. All right, so coach, you get you got Tennessee with that crazy running game, then Kansas City, 
Mahomes throws the heck. I mean, you know, they, they throw the ball better than anybody in the National Football League. And then back to, you know, a team that might be able to do a little bit of both eventually with Watson, you know, throw throwing the ball with the skill set that he has. But that running game is proven. And you just game plan along, no matter, you know, what the team emphasizes, you, you, your guys are malleable. I mean, you can mold them into a, a run-stuffing defense, a, a pass defenders extraordinaire. It's incredible how versatile your packages are and your players are within your packages. Yeah, again, testament to the players. I mean, they, they were able to, uh, you know, shift gears. And, and, and like all defenses try to do, you're going to, Try to stop what the other team does uh, the best, and and um, you know, and, and try to make them play left-handed, as they say, and and that's uh, something that we try to do. Okay, so let's uh, let's say we're 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 done talking about Cleveland. That that's over with. You certainly took care of business there. Now comes the goat, Tom Brady. Yeah, and he just comes off a game where. He goes back to the home area, San Francisco, and buys 100 tickets, family and friends, and they lay a dinosaur egg. They get smoked 35 to 7, so he's in a foul mood. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm sure he doesn't want to lay two eggs in a row. There's a little bit of that competitive uh, juice that you're going to be dealing with as well. But game planning against this guy, 45 years old. Literally, you have players on your roster that are half the age of Tom Brady. I mean, they were in diapers when he started playing in the National Football League. It's crazy. Yet this guy has thrown more passes and completed more passes than any quarterback in the NFL, and he's 45 years old. Amazing. Yeah, he's uh, he's unbelievable. He's the reason why he's the best to ever do it. Um, you know, we played him a bunch of times at Miami when I was there. And, um, you know, I remember back last year and during preseason um, – you know, I was watching him warm up, and I could not believe how well the ball was still coming out of his hand, how well he throws it. When you watch the tape, uh, it looks like 10 years ago to me. He's he's phenomenal. Uh, he's a, the ultimate competitor. He's seen it and done it all at the highest level. And, uh, you know, we have – I mean, I don't even know what to say, how much respect. He's he's the best that ever do it. And, Coach, it's a, it's a situation uh, – we're doing this podcast at the beginning of the week – so the week still has to unfold a little bit. But now after the Cleveland game, there's been some broken bones, some dislocated bones. There's been a lot of mm-hmm. things going on here. You don't exactly know who you're going to have where, who you're going to have as edge rushers, who you're going to have on the back end. Um, your linebacker position doesn't seem to be affected as much as the front end and the back end. So with a guy that you're preparing for like Brady, and if you don't have all hands on deck, and particularly if guys – are limited in the number of snaps that they've played. Do you have to game plan differently? Or one thing about your football team is they're all smart and you're a genius. I mean, you have just an inventory, uh, endless inventory of things you can draw from, but do you have to consider, oh man, how much of it do I use? But boy, with Tom Brady, I got to use it all because this guy, the simpler I am, the easier it is for him. How's that balancing act? Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how the week plays out. As you mentioned, we got some guys that are nicked up. You know, so so the day, and uh, everybody does this time of the year. It's you know, you're you're talking the last four regular season games, and everybody's banged up. We've been going since July, so um, we'll see how it plays out. You know, we'll have our plan in place, and the guys that are going to be up will be up and be expected to execute it. So, um, you know, you're right. You can't just do one thing against uh, this guy, but at the end of the day. It uh, doesn't matter what you do, as long as you're playing with good leverage and, and uh, being in the spot you're supposed to be, you give yourself a chance because he's going to put the ball exactly where it needs to be every time. There's no two ways about it. You lose a Pro Bowl cornerback in Woozy, in my opinion. The guy was playing at a Pro Bowl level. And Cam Taylor Britt is, I mean, <laughs> showing that he's more than capable. How proud are you of Cam Taylor Britt, Coach? Yeah, he's making strides each week. He continues to get better. And, um, you know, uh, we, we think uh, the world of him and how he competes and the way he tackles and he's getting better in coverage. And, you know, again, each each game is a still learning process for the guy. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy and proud of where he's at. So I, I look at Tom Brady and obviously he's not a, you know, there's not a quarterback run package you have to worry about. Tom Brady, you know where he's going to be. Um, he's going to be in the pocket. He's not going to be anywhere else. But this guy gets the ball out of his hand quicker than anybody in the history of the game, doesn't he? 
Yeah, he's he's always been that way. Um, uh, just he knows where to go with the ball. He's very super super smart. Seen it, you know. To think you're going to fool him with a disguise, it's it's not happening. Um, you know, so he he just knows where to go with it. The guy, their receivers and running backs and tight ends are prepared to get the ball on certain things. And uh, you know, he's uh, not only being a great talent, he's a super super smart player as well. Looking at their wide receiver core, um, Julio Jones and Mike Evans, that duo, that's like almost small tight ends that can run. I mean, yeah. that's big wide receivers, isn't it? Uh, power forwards, really. You know, they're yeah. out there, uh, yeah. you know, going up and jumping over people and making plays and two great, 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 great players. So, um, you know, their tight ends are good. They got, you know, heck of a running back with Fournette. So, you know, um, I, I just know anytime you play Tom Brady, you know, it's going to be a long day. and just got to make sure you have one more point than they have at the end of the game. Uh, Tom Brady, it, it's interesting. He's he's number one, like I said, in, in the NFL in, in, in pass attempts uh, and completions. He's fourth in yards. He's 31st in the league in yards per attempt, 6.19. So uh, have teams been successful in taking away his go ball stuff? Is he – Checking it down more or short to intermediate game more so this year than in the past? Um, I just think he's going to, whatever the defense presents, uh, he'll try to attack the weakness of it. So, um, you know, it's going to be – they're not getting a ton of one-on-one -on -one with a guy like Mike Evans. So, um, you know, if he sees it, he'll take advantage of it. But uh, he's going to attack where he thinks he needs to. And, um, you know, uh, if it's – Underneath to intermediate stuff, he'll do it. If it's taking a shot, he'll do it based on coverage and and situations. So, you know, you got to be ready for everything with him. Looking at their offensive line, uh, coach, what do you, what do you think of them up front? Um, you know, the, they've been down. Uh, you know, Wharfs uh, has not played uh, just because of injury. Uh, they're they're an aggressive group of guys that really play well together. Um, you know, they've had their struggles at times, but uh, by the same token, um, you know, they're they're a good group and they they want to protect the guy. So. So they're 32nd in the NFL running the football, 72.9 yards per play uh, per running play and 3.3 yards per attempt, which is 32nd in the league as well. But they've they've thrown the football more than anybody. 579 attempts, 381 completions more than anybody but 286 rush attempts fewer than anybody. So, I mean, it's obvious they got the goat and they're going to throw it. Yeah. I mean, he's a quarterback and those guys generally like to throw it more than hand it off. So, uh, but uh, again, I don't, I throw the numbers out. I know who we're playing. I know what's on the line for them and for us. Uh, we'll get their best shot. Coach last week, uh, Cleveland Browns, have a hell of a screen game. They screen to running backs, tight ends, receivers. I mean, Tampa Bay is decent with their screen game and their quick game too, aren't they? Oh, very much so. Uh, always been a big part of uh, what I know, uh, uh, you know, Brady likes to do and, um, you know, what they like to do down there in Byron. And, uh, you know, they're, they're well coordinated in how they do it, both wide receiver, perimeter screens and running back screens. So, again, another week that we'll get tested in that area. And coach, I know that uh, the coaching profession, it is it is like a big fraternity, and rightfully so. I mean, you guys, uh, the sacrifices that you make are, are extraordinary, and you guys become very good friends. But you've known Byron Leftwich a long time, haven't you? The the offensive coordinator for Tampa Bay. Yeah, Byron was. I was the DB coach, special teams coordinator at Marshall. The everybody oh. remembers the play where uh, oh. he was getting carried down the field. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. were at Akron in the rubber bowl. It was about 78 degrees below zero. <laughs> uh, there was seven people in the stands and, uh, um, you know, he broke his leg and the guys were p literally picking him up, carrying him down the field. And, you know, I'll still never forget. He's got one of the best quotes ever, in my opinion, just from a team guy. He said, you know, when they brought, he was about to be a you know top 10 pick in the draft and, um, you know, he breaks his leg and, uh, they said, um, uh, they asked him when he was in the locker room why, uh, you know, you had – weren't you worried about what your family thought and all that you have on the line? He goes, my family's out there on the field, you know. Wow. So he, he's that kind of guy. I love Byron to death, and he does he does a great job. Man, I'll tell you, that's uh, 
what, have you talked? I I know you probably talk at the, at some point, not this week, obviously, but what what's Byron's take on Tom Brady? What what does he say he's like? Uh, you know, not just meetings and um, you know, on the job kind of thing, but but overall, what's his take on Tom Brady? I mean, we don't talk too much about. It. I know he loves him. He loves the competitiveness of of him and and how great he is and just how hard he works at the game. That I do know. Um, don't really get much more into that with him, but. Uh, I'll give him a big hug in pregame and and wish him uh, wish him well and and um, you know big hug after the game. There you go, there you go, and then in between kick his butt, right? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> in yeah, a I friendly hope. kind of way. <laughs> that's right, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's uh, that's 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 good stuff. That really is, Coach. I know you're busy. I know you got a lot on your plate, um, man. One one and oh four more times, coach. One and oh four more times, and you're the number one seed in the AFC. How about that? Fingers crossed. Man, I love it. Put together a, a good one, coach. I love watching your team play. They run, they hustle, they play for each other. And I love watching what you do schematically, coach. It is it's it's Picasso, man. It's <laughs> yeah. Like I said, you're gonna be my agent for for sure. Thanks, Slap. I appreciate it, buddy. Have the best one you ever had, Coach. Yeah, hey, man. Thanks. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self motivation leadership and appreciating your teammates are key at first star logistics you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family build your future by working hard like i did you'll see results both on and off the field call first star logistics today and be part of our winning team